Oh, really? But I performed in Pittsburgh, too. But I can't remember the... It's like an old theater downtown. Oh, I know Paramount exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know that's Paramount. I forget the name of it, though. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It was really yeah. cool. I was worried. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Is Pittsburgh going to be cool? But it was. This is not what I expected at all. Yeah. I, I thought you'd be here with a guitar, and every time I a ask a question, you'd be like, well, Chuck the Movie Guy. Yeah, that's exactly. a sneaky question. Sneaky like a washing machine. Right, you know what right, I mean? right, you right, get that you know, thing going in here. But uh, I was really impressed with uh, your acting Thank performance you. in here. And my favorite scene in this movie is uh, Elliot's on the phone, getting a phone call from San Francisco, and he gets invited to move to San Francisco, yeah. and there's this two, three-second pause when uh, Elliot just does nothing. And where did you go for those three seconds? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting observation, you know? That was a scene that Aang shot with no cuts. So as a new actor, I was like, I can't really mess anything up in this, because it's a whole take. There's no coverage. We can't cut away to anything. So when I did that, I was... This whole thing's been such a weird lesson in trying to really be present and just believe what I'm doing. So with that, um, there's an actor I hadn't met yet who was calling from California. So I was just playing live to the, there was a little speaker, which you hear in the scene, right. sounds like the phone. So I was really just trying to listen to him as I would, you know, anybody on the phone. But that thing of like, you can't see a person's face and you're not connected as you would be in a conversation, but you're just, Time moves a little differently, you know? So if you get bad news or you get good news, it's this really weird, unnatural thing in life where you're not actually talking to the person, you're talking to a little object. And I tried to just, I don't know, I guess just be as real as possible and, and be in that moment. Yeah, it was a, it was a great scene. Yeah. Uh, um, now, before they even yelled action on your first day in front of the camera, how well did you know Elliot? Oh, not too well. I, I got to meet the real Elliot a couple times, the guy I was playing. Um, I think Aang made a choice pretty early on to try to play Elliot but not do an impression of this guy because he's older now and has already gone through the journey. He's much more like self-possessed and comfortable with himself. The Elliot I'm playing was repressed and um, stuck in a lot of ways, you know? So with Aang, I, I think I started to understand who Elliot was. I worked with a great acting coach named Harold Guskin and he really helped me find this guy. We, we would just read the script together and then just talk about uh, that time. Harold is, was alive then and is a little older, so we just talk about the 60s and having those kinds of parents and stuff. Yeah, that's so not the answer I was expecting. I fully expected, oh, I researched and did it. You know, I, I expected a really yeah. well knowledgeable answer like that, but I'm just fascinated. I would have loved to have just been there as an extra because I'm fascinated with the past and what people were like and yeah. just so different from what we yeah. are now. But uh, as a guy coming into this, uh, you know, a newcomer, I mean, just observing every, all the extras yeah. and so forth. That had to have been a trip in itself. It totally was. That's a great observation because that was what was really cool about being there as like a spectator. As much as I was an actor, I got to see them lighting stuff, how they were arranging all these extras, and having, how the cars move in each scene, and then they have to back them up and all that stuff. It was cool. Like It gives you a lot of respect for movies, just what goes into it. The whole team, not just the director and the writer and the director of photography, but you, know, you got guys who were like, directing the traffic with walkie-talkies and they have to run and hide and then come back out and be like, back the cars up, you know, it was cool. Especially that scene with Elliot and the cop going through, I mean, that was such a long oh. shot. So, I mean, that, I mean, that, I mean, just, and watching the extras, it's like, I almost had to take myself out of it and think, these extras are really giving their heart and soul into this, you know, performance. A little thing you don't even notice for a half second in the background. It was cool. Were... That was cool that day. We had a lot of track and the camera was just going with us all the way up this road and then reset everybody and then do it again. People were really cool. Extras, some days they were working like 12 hours and just standing there in their costumes and stuff, and they were into it. It was yeah. cool. And first time, I mean, Ang Lee, I mean, he's such a control, like, obsessive, somebody. as a first timer, I mean, yeah. you, I, I'm, I'm wondering what you're gonna, how you're gonna deal with somebody, the next person who's not going to be like that. Yeah, it's a weird thing where there's two sides to the coin where he really protected me because he knew what he was going for, so if I trusted him, I was okay. And the other side of it was I didn't really get to mess around. Like, I didn't get to do what I think I know how to do. So I'm grateful and also curious to see if I get to do other parts, what I get to bring some of my, like, not stand up, but just kind of my moves to stuff, you know? But it's cool. Like, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Well, I'm sure cool. the phone's going to be ringing. Thanks, man. Thank Thanks you. so much. Good to meet you. Nice. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, please take a phone.